Dang, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thanks so much for hanging out today, man. Whoa, whoa. Hell yeah. Thank you for having me, my dude. Man, this, I think it's been a long time coming. I know for me it is because I've wanted to talk to you for a while. Um, I've been a fan, uh, like most of our viewers, I think, since first seeing you as Michael Myers in, in Rob Zombie's Halloween 07. And um, we followed your career ever since. And and we, we've been in the same room before, but didn't cross paths. Five years ago, we were at 40 Years of Terror. You were there. And it just, it gets so crazy and it's over so quick. We never got a chance to connect there. So I'm super excited today to finally uh, have this conversation with you and, and to connect like this. Oh yeah, likewise, same. And I think I'm going to be at the 45 Years of Terror in Pasadena this year. Awesome. Awesome. We are stoked and uh, we're planning to be there as well. So that'll be great to uh, to see you in person. Rock and roll. Definitely. So before we get into to movies and Michael Myers and your music and everything, we always were Halloween daily and we are all things Halloween, not just Michael Myers, but all, everything about the holiday. And so we always like to talk a little bit about the holiday itself. And I, I always kind of start with with kind of childhood memories of the holiday, and so I'm just wondering, because you starred in a movie and kind of became somewhat synonymous with the holiday at such a young age, do you have uh, clear memories and fond memories of what the holiday was like before being uh, Michael Myers? Definitely. Um, I've actually honestly always loved the holiday. I like dressing up. Um, I also love vampires, right? Um, that's the reason my hair is long is because when I was about four or five, I seen Interview with a Vampire, and I was like, okay, that's me for sure. So um, I dressed up as a vampire for like a bunch of years for sure, and still have even after Hall the, the movie Halloween, mm -hmm. you feel me being in it. Um, but yeah, no, I've always, that's that's probably always been one of my more favorite holidays just because the dressing up aspect. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite aspects too. And we always have to ask, do you have a favorite costume? Is it the vampire costume? It probably It's yeah, it's it, I just throw some fangs in and then decide like <laughs> what type of vampire. Is it an interview with a vampire type right. vampire or like I could literally just throw fangs in right now and then be yeah, like, like a, a 21st modern... century vampire, you know, like yeah, I love that. I love that. So big vampire fan. Um, and how about Halloween candy? Do you uh, do you have a favorite Halloween candy? Oh man, I try to be healthy nowadays, my dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hear but you. payday, I do uh, enjoy yeah. a payday sometimes. Mm -hmm. And and actually, I don't know if you've ever been to Canada or had a Canadian candy called Eat More. I don't think so. But it's like dark toffee, peanuts, okay. caramel something. I don't know. I think the closest thing we have to it uh, is a payday, even though it's not really similar. But yeah. Okay. Those are great. Nice. Okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah I'm, we're, there you go, guys. You're going to have to in investigate um, something new here. I like that. I like that. And payday, right. of course. Yeah. That's a classic. You can't go wrong with that one. I like that too. So um, you have been acting for, you were acting years before even uh, starring in Rob's movie. How did that begin? How old were you when you started? And was it, was, I, I know your mom was in the business. Was it seeing her and being inspired by that? Or, or did, was it something you wanted to do at a young age? Yeah, so um, when my mom, hmm, before my mom had me, <clears throat> she was a, a world-renowned burlesque dancer um traveled around the world doing all that stuff um cool. but then when she had me uh bless her soul you know she she really invested her time and energy and everything right into like making a good kid you know yeah. really um so she took me to church and stuff as as a child and um i seen church plays um, you know, and so once I could start talking, I was like, I kind of want to do that. You know, like I remember, I think I was one of the, like the three wise men for a church play. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that started growing into like bigger plays and stuff. I was part of a local theater group, poor players. We did a lot of Shakespeare. I played like 
son of Hamlet in one and like some other stuff, you know? Um, and then that started to transition into, into film through student films. And, um, I personally like film acting more than theater acting. Mm -hmm. Um, they're both cool for their own reasons, but I'm more of a film guy myself. So then, yeah, started doing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of student films to feel me. And then it was kind of funny too. Um, we were, we were starting to be like, okay, maybe because my mom's family's from Canada and we're down here in San Diego, just her and I, okay. and we were kind of starting to think like, maybe, maybe we should just go to Canada, you know, like, just, you know, go to Canada, there's family there, whatever, whatever. Um, and then I got this audition and we didn't even realize because it, we, the audition was for Rob Zombie's Untitled Halloween Project. Okay. I didn't listen to much metal at that time, you know, um, so we thought it was going to be like a zombie yeah. type of project, you know, like mm -hmm. Halloween zombie. Okay. Spooky. Um, and we actually turned down the audition a couple times because living in San Diego, going up to LA, we always tried to line it up like at least a couple auditions. You feel me? Yeah. So eventually we ended up lining it up and with that one audition, I got it. That's amazing. I was going to ask about that, what you remembered from the audition process. And 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 you say even before getting there that it, it came at a time where you guys were considering maybe relocating, like you said. That's that's yeah. interesting to me, you know, that it was kind of at, at a pivotal moment where this this came, it sound, sounds like. Definitely. I usually like tell people if they're like, do you have any advice on whether it's acting, music or whatever? And it's just don't stop. Yeah. don't stop like d there's so many people that are going to tell you no don't be the person that's going to tell you yourself no because then you won't make it yeah. for sure yeah i like that yeah so what what do you remember from that audition process you said it just took took the one um audition yeah yeah i remember going in there and thinking maybe i wasn't gonna get it because mm -hmm. most of the kids in the audition room that were also waiting to be seen or i'd assume the same part um mm -hmm. were all a few inches shorter than me and had short brown hair okay so i'm like uh i mean i'm still gonna do the audition i'm here but all right you know mm -hmm. probably not gonna get it one of these shorter short brown haired kids well that's what it looks like they want you know mm -hmm. but um yeah i remember I vaguely remember doing the audition. The audition tape is actually up on YouTube, I think. So that might be where that memory is stored from. Yeah. <laughs> Just seeing the video because it's been so long yeah. now. But um, yeah, no, it was fun. I don't even think those scenes were used in the actual movie because we were talking about going through the woods and like hiding a dead cat or something for the audition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I do remember. It, it might be on one of the... Uh... DVD bonus features, I think maybe they've got some of that anyway. And um, that is interesting that it was scenes that didn't even were never even shot at all. And, right. and I also love that um, the acting kind of started on stage at church doing church plays, you know, which a lot of us, you know, grew up church plays as well as kids, you know. <laughs> but I love that to go and and not too long after that, here, here you are, you know, getting cast as Michael Myers. So when you're About in there, seven years. About seven years is what it took of the grinding from theater to student film to Halloween. Wow. So how how old were you when, when you got that? Halloween? I was yes. 11. You were 11. Wow. Yeah. And wow. then right after that, you feel me? I was in Hancock and then Pushing Daisies, too. It was like a little two-year role. And then I took a break, not on purpose, but, you know, yeah. I, I needed to be, be a teenager. Sure. So, yeah. I think I think most of us can agree that it's probably better to not see a, a teenager grow up. Just let them do that. And then, oh, now you're an adult. That's awesome. We didn't have to deal with you being a teenager. Right. right. Yeah. Do you, were you familiar at 11 with who Michael Myers was yet? Had you seen any of the other movies or you just had no idea? Not at all. Um, yeah. I, right I bet at that age, you probably, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, right after we filmed, right after I finished filming my part, I think um, I think I watched, at that point, I think I watched the original. Mm -hmm. To kind of, like, familiarize, I guess, myself a little bit with yeah. 
but I mean, even still, um, it took me like a few horror conventions to really realize like, oh, Michael Myers is like, it's kind of big. Yeah. Yeah. The magnitude <laughs> of it. Well, and I was yeah. going to ask yeah. that, um, at what point it did dawn on you? Because again, you at such a young age and you had been working, like you said, already for seven years in the business and you had been doing mm -hmm. these auditions, you had a been appearing on film already and um and then you get this role i mean i imagine during the filming it, it wasn't even what you were thinking that oh this is an iconic role that people are going to want to yeah, talk to me about like forever it was just a bigger bigger thing that i was used to you know what yeah. i'm saying it was more time yeah more more filming more lines and stuff like that but it was all just you know, I mean, even this one this one project I did before Halloween, I remember my mom, I think we went up to L.A. for like some sort of like, I think it was like a kids on tape type thing where it's like red means stop, green means go, you know? Yeah. And we did. <clears throat> and my mom was like, OK, we're going to go. You're going to go work, you know? And after when we were leaving filming, I was like, so when am I going to work? You know what I mean? So it's always yeah. just been something that I really enjoy fun, doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds great because, you know, I mean, you, you do hear some horror stories sometimes about child actors and stuff where they, they didn't really want to be there and all. So that's that that makes me feel good to hear that, that you were you didn't even regard it as work most of the time. Yeah. My mom got into acting after I did. She got into okay. acting, but sometimes on these student films, People just don't show up. It's a student film. It's not paid. You know what I'm saying? Something okay. comes up. People forget, whatever, whatever. But yeah, that's how she, those were her first couple of like acting gigs. There's this one film on YouTube called Frank's First Love. I played a zombie. That's why I was pushing off the Rob Zombies Untitled Halloween Project. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was I'm like, I just played a zombie. I'm okay. You yeah. feel me? But the mom of one of the girls in there acting wise didn't end up showing up so that was one of the first things my mom did film wise and that's called frank's first love for any of y'all who are interested that's a cute little cute little youtube project there you go all right yeah we're definitely gonna have to check that one out i haven't seen that yet but yeah i'm gonna search it out on youtube and check it out yep so this was your your biggest role yet it sounds like um, do, do you remember your first day on set? Do you, do you have memories of, of what the first thing you filmed was? Oh, man. I know it was... So, uh, my first so few times on set, it wasn't filming stuff, right? Okay. There was there was a table read. I vaguely remember the table read. Um, we saw the Hollywood sign for the first time. For, during one of the fittings even though i had been to la plenty of times so it was it was kind of like magical in a way my mom and i were walking and then we like turned around and it was just like there's the hollywood sign even though you've been to la hundred sometimes you ain't never seen it now you do um awesome. that was pretty cool i think they were filming heroes the tv show on the same yeah. lot so I had a couple of those actors before ish filming because we didn't really film on the lot we did a lot of like filming at the house or the mm -hmm. insane asylum or a school or the woods rather than like on the lot type thing so but the first stuff that i remember was definitely stuff from the lot yeah i remember killing daryl sabaro with the stick because that was that was just so fun like it's not i knew who he was too right it's like i'm not I was gonna never ask been that. Like, like horror fan but i mean he's a spy kid yeah. you know so i'm like man i'm killing the spy kid and i'm a nice guy too i'm not like violent by any <laughs> means so like even though that i have like a styrofoam stick that i'm hitting him with rob keeps telling me like go harder go harder like get him i'm like are you good dude and he's like yeah you're good go harder go harder and then finally we're on like the last prop stick and rob's like okay you can chill out now because like, you know they're styrofoam they break <laughs> Oh, man. And that is such a memorable scene, too. I mean, it's Michael's first kill, and, you know, it's obviously something, you know, a lot of people um, remember from Rob's reimagining, is we do get to spend so much more time with your version of Michael, young Michael. You know, in the original right. film, there's that iconic opening scene, but it, it's like five or ten minutes. Here, 
we get that whole first act and it's it's all you in almost every scene and that first kill it's so just primal and brutal like you said, i mean just just a big old branch and and but yet we're smiling as fans not just because michael's killing but because it, this is a, we, we kind of feel like he, he might have deserved it a little bit this time you know we're a little on michael's side so right. it, it's a very interesting new take um, and, and it kind of, that's Rob's reimagining, whereas, you know, Michael is the more sympathetic version. Um, he's still pure evil, but he's a little bit more sympathetic pure evil in, in Rob's version. And, um, and that's our first introduction to that. So, um, and that was all you, right? I mean, there was, there was no body double doing the hitting. That was all you, uh, beating the, the only, uh, him. there was one body double one time when I had to touch Hannah Hall's leg because oh, okay. I was so young and. I think yeah. she was 18 or something. So just they couldn't, they couldn't do that. Yeah. I gotcha. And um, with all of these kills, one of the best is that Judith scene. And what I love about, again, Rob's version, and everybody's got opinions on it, but I, you know, I love the risks that he takes and how he expands on some of the stuff from the original film. I mean, we've got, you know, young Michael taking out Judith, but. I love in his version, we actually see you put on the adult mask as well in that scene. And that's always one of my favorite parts. And it's just kind of weird to see, you know, it's out of proportion and it's just so odd and weird. But it's, I think it's one of the, the scenes for myself anyway, as a fan that really stands out in that film. Um, can you talk a little bit about shooting that, the, the stuff that you did um, shoot in that scene and, and, going from the clown mask and then getting to wear that, that iconic adult mask a little bit too? Well, I don't really remember anything in particular about wearing the mask itself, but that scene was pretty funny because both Hannah and I uh, were like, you ever just like hitting the giggle dick and like everything is kind of funny? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Both of us were like, hitting the giggle dick for lack of a better word you feel me and like yeah. we yeah it that was like <laughs> i remember rob being like can y'all stop laughing like let's do this <laughs> um was any of it at at 11 did you find any of it like disturbing yourself or were you just all all game and into it i mean this i imagine this was a little bit different than than a lot of the roles that, that you had done before. A little bit different than yeah. Shakespeare and, and the church plays. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's all it's all part of the craft. And uh, yeah. it's, you know, at a young age, I knew it's like acting and whatnot. But I've always been a bit afraid of like the dark. I mean, not anymore, really. But like, there's that one scene right before I kill um, the stepdad. And I look outside the window and the cameras are outside, right? And you see me from inside. I was the only person in that house at that point, And I was scared. Um, but other than that, it was all just fun. You, yeah. you feel me? If anything, more annoying. Like, um, <laughs> fake blood is just so <laughs> sticky. <laughs> and it gets everywhere. And it's like, ah, now I got to go wash up from all this fake blood on me. <laughs> do you remember um rob ever giving you any like specific directions as far as like how to portray michael no nah, not really honestly i remember him as more of like one of my favorite types of directors yeah. which i feel like he kind of just like chooses great actors and then like he's like all right here's the scene a to b you know it just do it yeah. You know what I'm saying? And because there are some directors that'll cut you if you miss the word the or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And then there's directors that are like, you know what's supposed to happen. Just make that happen. You know, I, that's that's the type of director I love to work with. And that's the type of director Rob was. Um, the scene with Malcolm McDowell where I'm like crying, like, I just want to go home. Yeah. That was completely uh, improv. He pointed the camera at us and he was like, I want more screen time with both y'all on it mm -hmm. like do something and you just came up with that there yeah wow that's 
Because again, that's another one of the most memorable scenes and really emotional, you know, and stuff that I love that Rob expands on because we don't get any of that Smith's Grove sanitarium time in the original film or, or any of the other films, really. I love that he, he took a little time to explore some of that and some of the, those early sessions with Loomis and, and seeing the character transform and go into the masks and um, wearing the different masks. Um, what would you say was, was the hardest scene for you to film? Hmm. That's better. Hardest. Um, man. That might just go back to the scary part with where yeah. I was in a, in that house by myself in the dark. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like I said, I'm not afraid of the dark anymore, but that's even still kind of recent. So when I was younger, you feel me, like, I was I was afraid of the dark. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be um, the scariest part and the hardest part, just to, to get through that. Um, right, remember- because all the other stuff, it's all it's all acting, there's people there, the cameras are on, Rob's behind the camera, yeah. you know, like, it's all, my mom's right over there, I can always see her, you know, but then there was that one scene <laughs> where I'm just by myself in oh, this by dark house, and every all the cast and crew and everybody else is outside, and I'm like, uh, I'm scared, y'all, are we done? <laughs> and, um... I was going to ask what, what your favorite scene was. Was it getting to, to kill a spy kid, or uh, what was your favorite scene to shoot? Spy kid was pretty lit. <laughs> Killing Judith, because obviously yeah. it was, we were just so laughy. <laughs> um, but, I mean, all around, just all of it, honestly. Like, it's, yeah. I love acting. Like, I don't know if other actors are, like me or not because like i like obviously it's cool to get paid for it but i would do it without getting paid for it you know like Mm -hmm. i don't don't let the major media hear that (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry manager i didn't mean to say that (laughs) but not like it's just it's i love i love creating i love acting i love like the music side of it too you know like just the whole anything Creation and entertainment. I love that. And it sounds like it was a, a positive experience on, on set for you. And, and like you said, it kind of set you off. And, and, and you had uh, some other really big projects with some uh, iconic co-stars as well. Um, do you remember the first time, though, that you saw the movie, Rob's Halloween, like all the way through, and what you thought of it? I don't, honestly. Because okay. I do remember that I didn't see it at the premiere. Okay. Um, just because I think I just wanted to watch my part first. And obviously I wasn't about to just walk out halfway through the premiere type thing. Yeah. So, um, didn't watch it after the red carpet. My mom did. And my manager, I think Mm -hmm. at the time. Um, I mean, it couldn't have been more than a year later that I had seen my part. And then a couple years, the full thing. And, and just as somebody, like I said, I'm not, I haven't ever really been like, I get scared, you know, like yeah. I was the kid that would close my eyes when my mom was watching something scary. And I'm like, oh, that's scary. So like, I didn't, you know, yeah. So not, not a big horror fan before or, or since even. I like vampires, my dude. Yeah. I like vampires. Well, that's all but right. But other yeah. than that, <laughs> like that's, that's my spooky side. I like yeah. vampires. And grunge vibes, I guess. You know, I'm a '90s kid, born in '95. I got, I like that, like just dark, grungy, yeah, industrial vibe. You know, but other than that, I mean, I'd rather watch a comedy high key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you said it. It took even a couple convention appearances before it, it really hit you how massive this was and and what a big legacy truly that that you're a part of because there's not a whole lot of other men on this planet that can say they've played this role and you're part of an illustrious group here. Um, so can you tell us about when it did, you know, become real to you that, holy shit, you know, this, this was a pretty big deal. Yeah. I don't even know if it like hit like 
at one point. You know, I think mm-hmm. it was more like uh, probably within the first like few five maybe conventions that I did because, mm-hmm. you know, I was I was bullied as a kid. You know, I'm, I was the artist kid that, you know, I was chubby. I had long hair like, you know, so my confidence wasn't the best. Right. So like I probably didn't even think that I could be in something that big, even though that was obviously the dream. Your kid, all sorts of brains are weird. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, probably within the first few conventions, because then it's like, wow, these people actually like, I know who I am. That's kind of crazy. And they're all stoked to see me. They want me to scribble on this picture for them. They want a picture with me. Like, I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a massive, uh, fan base, massive fandom and, and just a franchise that, you know. It's it's as unkillable. I always say the franchise is just as unkillable as Michael Myers is because it's not going anywhere. They can say this is the last one, whatever, but we all know that Michael Myers is going to be around longer than all of us. Yeah, right. And I'm sure someone will reboot it at some I'm point. Sure. And yeah. So so moving on from Halloween, I mean, you're you're obviously now you know you've got a whole fan base from Michael Myers fans and making convention appearances, but when did your focus begin to go? I mean, I know you're, you're, you've been constantly acting, but you've been doing more and more music in, in more recent years, and I know you're concentrating a lot more on that. So when did that focus start to shift, and, and where does that come from? Well, I'm not focused more on it. Y'all just see more of it because – okay. As an actor, you got to get hired on someone else's project as as a producer, rapper, singer, engineer, director, editor. Give me a day, I'll make you a song and a new music video if I want. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that for me with music and it's a little harder to find, you know, something to be in, so uh, so to speak. But um, being a teenager was, you know, tricky as being a teenager is for I feel like a lot of people but it got me into writing therapeutically um like whenever my brain would get like uh clusterfucked I say like you know it's like oh fuck this fuck this fuck this but usually by the time I'm done writing it would always say like but it's gonna be okay um and then just uh about the same time that I started acting I also started playing music and dancing you know what I'm saying I wanted to do it all um, so I played piano for a little bit and guitar and bass and drums. Um, and, uh, the area that I was born, uh, off El Cajon Boulevard rap was more predominant amongst my friend group, um, and stuff like that. So, um, by the time I was like 17, 18, and I was already just writing to help myself, mm-hmm. I was like, well, I might as well try, you know, like turn this into a some cool music and at first it was no good and that stuff's actually up to see i I don't recommend watching it but (laughs) you know um my newer stuff you know it i I just i I haven't stopped and that that goes back to what i said earlier just don't stop because you know i was bad then and if i was just like ah well i'm not good at this right well then I, i wouldn't have ever gotten a song with tech nine oh the horror or kid crusher Kid Crusher and I have a song coming out soon. Um, a awesome. cool Australian like metalcore artist. Oh, awesome! Um, yeah, you know, so you know, just I just kept at it, and and now I'm at the point where even if I'm on set, you know, as an actor, um, set life is more like hurry up and wait, get to set, get in costume, make sure you look good. Yeah. All right, now hang out in your trailer <laughs> until we need you. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I just bring my laptop and studio stuff with me so go, I can yeah. kill birds with one stone. Um, I have a project called Pussy Slayer. It's an 80s goth rock project. It's all about heartbreak, so it's not like a slit pussy. You feel me? It's not that type of vibe. Yeah. Um, but I was working on that while filming Euphoria. Wow. Like, in, in my trailer. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Never, never resting, it sounds like. Like, always working on something it sounds like, and you have been your your whole life. It sounds like from, from such a young age. Um, 
<laughs> well, I stopped when I was a teenager, but then I got into trouble. So now I just keep it up. So I uh, stay out of trouble. You know, we're good. We're good. Yeah. It's all of this creation, whether it's acting, modeling, um, music, and music breaks down, obviously, into the producing of it, the engineering of it, the writing, the recording, the then music video wise, filming and, and editing it as well. Um, it's all so like, it's all like, I want it to make money for me, obviously, in the future. But this is also just my hobby, basically. Like, I have fun doing it. And yeah. it's extremely therapeutic for me. So, yeah, like, there's no reason to stop, <laughs> at least that I see, you know. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. I imagine it's still, you know, you said that a lot of the writing started as almost a, a form of therapy. And, and I imagine still, all these years later, it's still very much therapeutic yeah. to, to do that every day, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it's cool with the, with the producing. Um, it's almost, so like I tell people sometimes, like the difference between writing therapeutically and producing therapeutically is like, uh, writing wise, no, 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 I don't, yeah, yeah, that's not a word. You can't really put that down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can take any noise and turn it into a beat. Yeah, that's right. When it comes to the beat making, it's so just like you are. There's no limits, really. Yeah, like, canvas. yeah, something just squeaked. Oh, that could be a beat. Like, you know, there's no limit because, like I said, isn't going in a rap song unless it's your ad libs. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned uh, working with Tech Nine. I know he's a huge Michael Myers fan himself, and and um, he references the character a lot in his music as well. So, how did that collaboration come about? Man, I was so blessed by that because I can literally even remember the backyard that I was hanging out in when listening to Worldwide Choppas for the first time and being like, "What's going? Like, oh, oh, then that's Tech Nine. Like, wow, okay, this dude's sick." And then you know, flash forward. 14 years and i got a song with him but yeah like i said uh he he has a whole little horror wall of like horror movies and stuff that he likes i i'm assuming um and he has an action figure or doll like of me with the mask and i think the stick <laughs> so like he'd made a few posts with it behind him and i was like i should shoot my shot like for sure for sure so I'm like, hey, you know, in the comments, like, that's me behind you. Like, not like not trying to sound creepy like that. You you have a figure of me. <laughs> What's up? And it took a few times, bro. It took like a few posts of him with that behind him and me commenting and me sharing it on my story saying, hey, fans, comment, comment that he's got me behind him yeah. and maybe hit me up because I do music. And then like he like a few posts he was like oh wow and then i think he started following me and my mom instantly and then he made a post uh with the beat of the song and him jamming out to it and he wanted ghost main and i to be on the song with him um and then a few months later like once he sent me the beat dude i was <laughs> within two hours i had him a few different versions of the verse you know i'm like well, here you go <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm not worthy type hey you know <laughs> and um yeah and then he hit me up a few like a month or so later and then told me about the switch up um that it wasn't going to be ghost main but it was going to be Corey taylor and hobson and tom morello and i'm just like wow like i still need to do a song with ghost main for sure aesthetically i think for the culture yeah. that's a for sure need needed thing but hobson for example I went to a concert when I was 18 years old with my best friend. I, I had just started rapping, you know, at 18 years old. And halfway through his show, he was like, oh, everybody's a rapper nowadays. Raise your hand if you're an MC. I raised my hand. He brought me and six other people up on stage to spit like a hot 16. Now, I wasn't the best by any means, but I wasn't the worst. But it's cool that just like, you know, just like figuring out Tech 9 and then a few years later, playing like spitting a shitty hot 16 on stage with hobson <clears throat> eight years later having a song with him that's that's crazy that is and it's crazy because crazy music business is is funny like this because out of that song i've only met and talked to tech nine that that is insane and and yeah that uh those other guest stars on there are pretty legendary themselves but that is 
like a, a wild full circle moment for you to all the, like you said, all those years later to be out in the audience and then to be, you know, on the same track. Right. Dreams, yeah. dreams do come true. Like you said, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't tell yourself. No, there's so many people out there that are ready to tell you no, but that one person ready to tell you yes to like a million dollar check or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You're not yeah. going to find them if you tell yourself no. Yeah. And you mentioned working on uh, Euphoria. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I mean, that's obviously this massive HBO show um, with a huge following itself. Another huge fan base already. I think it's right. got itself. Um, what was that experience like? That was fun. That was really fun. I'm. A, that was. It was laid back. Hopefully, they bring me back season three. Yeah. Mitch. Woohoo! Let's focus on Mitch. Um, because <laughs> that was just such a laid back character. You know, I was just I was chilling. It was cool to like meet and talk to Zendaya. Most of uh the cast and crew were all like really chill people, and that's not always the case. Um, the weekend, the weekend, the artist, right? Yeah. The weekend. He was on set the first day, and he recognized me. That baffled me. I was That's like, awesome. you're the weekend. You're like, you're beyond a list. You know what I'm saying? You're the platinum list or whatever the fuck yeah. celebrity that is. I'm, I'm, I'm a few steps under that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you know who I am? That's cool. That is awesome. Right? So hopefully they bring me back. Back. There you go, guys. Bring Mitch back. Right. Um, and you also appeared, you worked on uh, American Horror Story. Um, I think it was the uh, double feature season. And uh, that must have mm -hmm. been a cool experience. That was. It definitely was. Those three actors were, uh, that was that was crazy to just work with them. And I mean, there was the fake blood part, you know. <laughs> got sticky and stuff and it was late and cold and i had to shower but other than the fake blood it mm -hmm. was such a a fun experience you know yeah that that was that was great working with evan peters that <laughs> so like work this as as a kid from el Cajon boulevard who's just like an artist and like you know what i'm saying yeah it's crazy working sometimes with these people because like so i shoot my shot a lot too you got to shoot your shot, shoot your shot in the dark. You know, you don't know until you know type thing. But <laughs> I had asked Evan Peters if he could follow me on Instagram, right? I was like, that would be super cool if you could follow me on Instagram. Well, he doesn't have social media, I guess. So <laughs> he looked at me so weird. And like thinking back on it now, like, yeah, that does sound weird. Like somebody who doesn't have social media be like, hearing, hey, can you follow me? Like, <laughs> he's like, what? why <laughs> like and then i was all embarrassed i'm like oh i meant like uh <laughs> not don't just I'm not, I'm not thinking you would follow me around town <laughs> and stuff like oh, look at this guy he's following me that's great yeah i guess if you're if you're you have no contacts then yeah i mean a request like that yeah you just don't know but but come on, man, Evan. I mean, everybody's on IG now, at least. I mean. Right. <laughs> for better or you for thought. worse. Yeah, for better or for worse. We're all plugged into the Matrix, right? We, <laughs> for better or for worse. We're all there. We got to be, you know? Yeah. So um, what um, what are some current or upcoming projects you can talk about um, and let our viewers know? Because, of course, we're all fans of uh, – your, your career and, and on screen and in music. So what, what can you uh, preview for us? Hell yeah. Uh, well, I got a few ND and, and I always mess up. NDAs floating okay. around. So, but what I can talk about our project, my mom and I are almost ready to have producers produce. Really, it's a full feature length um, Viking vampire epic time story. Um, that's about what I can tell you all about it as of right, right now. Um, new music with Kid Crusher. It's kind of funny because music wise, I'll do whatever, you know, I, I have rock and roll. I have electronic. I have a disco tape I'm even sitting on, uh, right now, but I'm, I'm mostly a rapper, you know, and it's just funny. My, my three big features, Tech Nine song, 
that was even more rock and roll, even though like, you know, Tech Nine and Hobson are rappers. It had Corey Taylor on it, Tom Morello, and the beat was very rock oriented. Yeah. And then a feature of mine dropped a few months ago with Oh the Horror, another metal band. Um, and now Kid Crusher, another metal artist. It's kind of like wonder if like <laughs> I'm gonna end up featured on a rap song one day. <laughs> <laughs> but um no, hey, it's all fun to do that type of stuff. Uh, yeah. So I got that coming out. I lost my Instagram page, my main one. Um, it had 30,000 followers. I had had it since I was 19, so I guess it maybe is a blessing in disguise. You know, it had like 5,000 some posts. Like, you know, give it all that. We got this new one, Great Dig Official. Um, so I'm going to be working with the followers on that with my new drops of music so what i'm doing right now i'm just i'm at like 1100 followers so at 2000 followers new song and music video you know what i'm saying and then maybe a 3000 followers new song and video type thing so that's awesome. what yeah that's what's going on now and then you know like i said there's a few ndas that i can't really talk about but i'm always always working always grinding up to something awesome i know you are and and we love to see it and um and you mentioned at the top 45 years of terror. Of course, this year is the 45th anniversary of the original Halloween and the whole franchise and all things Michael Myers and the big reunion event that's happening again out in Pasadena um, this fall. And um, what is your thoughts now? I mean, it's been since you made that film, it's been almost 16 years now, about 16 years. And um, obviously the franchise has been around four and a half decades now. 13 films and there'll be more down the road i'm sure um do you have a theory or thoughts on on why this franchise is so unkillable like michael myers is unkillable what what keeps fans like myself and all of these crazy rabid fans coming back for more year after year movie after movie tall dark and handsome yeah <laughs> that's he it right it. that's that, I think nail on the head. I think you might have nailed it. Tall, dark, and handsome, right? I, I've had a lot of people talk about that mask that it, they are weirdly attracted to the mask. Ah, I've always put oh. out there that like I think it's just only Michael Myers and Ghostface that are kind of the only horror icons that don't have a fucked up face. Ah, that's true. Yeah. You feel me? That's so, right. I don't know. Yeah, usually the masked killers are hiding some some horrible situation underneath. But you're right, um, yeah. Michael. The few times Michael's unmasked or or ghost face, yeah, their their faces are relatively uh, normal and okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> tall, dark, and handsome. I like mm -hmm. that. I like that. And um and so you said that you're probably going to be at 45 years of terror. Can we can we look forward to seeing you there? Yeah, no, I'm gonna be there. It's locked in. Unless I'm filming something, that would be the only reason I wouldn't be. I'll try to talk to Sean about maybe even playing. Uh, yeah. I'm always down to perform, get more stage hours in. Ah, oh, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. That would be a treat for fans, I think. Right, man. I should ask him after this interview because then if he says yes, I could hit up Tech Nine and then say, "Hey, buddy, uh, there you go." And <laughs> yeah, you know he'd want to be there anyway. I feel like right. he's such a fan; he's got he'd want to be there anyway. I mean, he'd yeah. come just just to hang out. I feel like and yeah, jump on the Ah, there we go. All right, Sean, there you go. There you go. Make it happen. Make it happen. Oh my gosh, that's giving me goosebumps thinking about that. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That'd be lit. Hell yeah. That'd be that'd be so awesome. Oh really? man. Well, hopefully we will be there with you and and to witness it all and um and to take part. It'll be great to uh, connect in person. And um yeah, I can't thank you enough. This has been amazing. Just uh, chatting with you and and learning more about your origin story and and what brought you here. And and I love your uh, message of don't stop and and uh, just just keep at it and. Uh, and some of your full circle moments that you've talked about. I, I really appreciate that. Hell yeah. I appreciate you, my dude. And everybody watching this, make sure you follow my new Instagram, Great Dag Official. Uh, follow my TikTok if you got it. 
half the time TikTok's banning me from going live. So make sure you follow all the social medias. That's also just great day. Um, and then you can check out my music everywhere besides SoundCloud. So Spotify, Apple, YouTube, even on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, some of them. Great day. And it's all one word. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you and everybody watching. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we definitely appreciate you. Like I said, we're huge fans and, um, you know, we have been for a while and we love watching your career continue to, to grow and blossom and all the projects you're involved in. And I always hate saying goodbye. So instead, since every day is Halloween with us anyway, we're just going to say happy Halloween 2023. Happy Halloween 2023. That's funny, though, because I don't like the word bye either. Like, goodbye or bye. Yeah. It's so final. Yeah. It's so, like, never going to be seen right. again. Like, see you later. Catch you around. Yes. See you yes. on the flip side. Like, there's so many other options for yes. bye. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yes. We don't We don't like to say goodbye. And we will definitely talk right. again, I'm sure. I'm sure you you have a home away from home here on the HDN channel anytime, my man. Hell yeah. Rock and roll. On the flip side, my dude. Awesome. Awesome. We'll see you, man. Happy Halloween. Hell yeah. Likewise.